Oh, thank God. Dbrand was about this close to getting me lynched by an angry mob of retro gaming enthusiasts. And all for what? To prey on gamers' nostalgic memories of a simpler time by selling them these retro-inspired dark plates? How do you even call that a dark plate? Let's put it aside for now and focus on the star of the show. The, Whoops. the world's first 64-bit gaming console. Not that any of that really mattered. It ran in 32-bit mode most of the time since it didn't really need either the additional memory address space or the additional precision that was afforded to it by having a 64-bit chip. It's just that Nintendo, like much of the gaming industry, had kind of painted themselves into a corner, releasing 8-bit, then 16-bit, then 32-bit consoles, and marketing to consumers that more bits meant more performance, when in fact, that is not truly the case. Of course, it didn't stop Nintendo from leaning super hard into the 64-bit branding. In fact, even the logo has 64 faces and 64 vertices to refer to the 64-bit capability of the machine. It's ha there's actually a lot of kind of performance and nuts and bolts marketing going on here that you just don't see from modern Nintendo. I mean, the frequency of the pro 94 megahertz? I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to talk about. It's just, can you imagine Nintendo talking about the performance of the Switch today? I mean, it would be a pretty verbose apology letter. That's kind of the only yeah. thing that I could imagine them saying about it. Complete control over every move with the unique analog control stick. That's right, one analog control stick. By 1999, when this one came out, boy, did they ever have a library of games. Of course, the Nintendo 64 originally launched in 1996, and it was only a few years later that they released these fun colors. Ice, fire, smoke, jungle, watermelon, and grape. And I gotta tell you, it's not the kind of thing that as a 90s kid myself, people were running out and buying a new Nintendo 64 in order to get the new colors. But if you had the new colors, it was pretty cool. Even just the controllers. I mean, I didn't own one, so I never got to play with the cool, you know, clear controllers or even the first party controllers, but I got to envy the kids who had them. <laughs> Not everything about 90s video game marketing should make a return, but I gotta say, things like Fantastic series. Yeah, why can't we say that anymore? That's awesome. It's just fun. Wow. This really is complete in box whether it's on account of the packaging fading or something else, those colors are very different. I, <laughs> I was looking at the packaging thinking, wow, Dbrand really didn't get the colors very right. But compared to the console itself, yeah, that is pretty darn close. Obviously there's different colors of things inside, which make it a little bit tricky, but especially if you look at it next to the controller. Damn. Whoa, Nintendo Power Magazine. I couldn't afford Nintendo Power Magazine. I was a poor kid. What happens if I actually ship this now? Probably nothing. A year subscription for 20 bucks? How the devil did they do an entire magazine and shipping for $1.50 an issue? Oh, oh, there was other stuff to order in here. Oh, Store 64. Now that you've got the world's best video game system. Get the most out of it. I don't know if the world agreed. Uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 1, there's a number of reasons for that. If I had to boil it down to two things, I'd say Sony's triumph over Nintendo this generation came down to support for third-party game developers and the choice of a disc-based storage system rather than a cartridge. I mean, as a Super Nintendo kid, I never had one of these or a PlayStation. I, you know, I would go to friends' houses with PlayStations and I'd go, this is ridiculous, the loading times. When do you even play the game? But it enabled developers to build much, much larger experiences. I mean, Final Fantasy VII, how many cartridges would you have needed? It would have been a 15 cartridge game and would have cost like $400. How much do you guys want these collectibles right now? They actually kind of suck. Like the quality compared to what you can make inexpensively these days is sort of trash, but like, they're so, I don't know, genuine. Backpack case, 26 bucks. I mean, that makes our backpack look like a ripoff. LTTstore.com. 
That is just about the stiffest feeling N64 joystick I have ever touched. Like even back in 1996, I don't think I felt one this good. Oh, I forgot about this. Like I said, I never owned one. The power supply is only sort of external. My theory seeing something like this would be that it would allow them to manufacture the consoles all the same and then just swap out the power supplies depending on the region they were gonna be shipping to. But because they region locked the consoles, I don't really know what the point of this is. This is just a built-in power supply with extra steps. I mean, maybe they found that the failure rates were quite high in testing and they wanted to be able to easily, I don't know. Um, ah, right, the expansion port. This was used for the Nintendo disk drive, which I think only got a handful of games, all of which were Japan exclusive. That, that's right, right? Didn't, didn't it get like eight games or something like that? I don't remember how many, but not very many. Basically wasn't a thing. The business end was here. And I think we've actually got a couple cartridges for today, right? The most common ones. Dbrand spent all their money on the consoles and couldn't afford to send us any cool cartridges. Uh, let's go with Mario Kart 64. On the top, there's a memory expansion port that was needed for just a handful of games. Uh, among them, uh, Donkey Kong 64, Perfect Dark. It supported four controllers, which was flipping cool at the time though. Not that anyone that I knew had four controllers, just cause controllers like now were really, really expensive. But theoretically you could play games four player. Um, the only time I think I ever played a four controller game was on a PlayStation with a multi-tap with one of my friends. But we didn't have any other friends. So I think it was just me, him and his brother. So we only made it to three. Anyway, the point is uh, the game supported four controllers. Oh, there's one more expansion port to show you guys though. The bottom of the controller was used for memory expansion so you could save your game, like that kind of memory. And then also for rumble packs. Oh, of course they sent more colors. Okay, um, those ones weren't complete in box, but yeah, can I, may I please has? Ooh, we have smoke oh, with Super Smash Bros in it. And we also got an orange one. Man, everything's getting very chaotic over here right now. I think the point of all of this was to be able to compare the colors of the D-Brand dark plates with the original controllers and consoles. Smoke looks pretty darn good. And what was the orange called again? Just check, ah, fire! Wow, yeah, that does look fire. Now the question is, I know I'm not in too much trouble because none of these were sealed in box, but they're all in great condition. So how much trouble would I get into if I were to disassemble one of them with this screwdriver? Let's put this away for now. I'm not opening up any of these consoles. Now, there's one color that we don't have a comparison for. Atomic purple consoles were exceedingly rare. Only a handful of prototypes existed, but there were controllers. So Dbrand felt like, ah, Screw it, we'll do an atomic purple console if you wanna make your PlayStation 5 look all atomic purple retro. I think it looks flipping awesome anyways. Probably the second best color. I didn't think I would like ice as much, but in person, I think you're right, David, I'm with you. Ice looks amazing. I guess we're set up to play on the smoke console though, so why don't we do that? And then I will just use the ice controller. Now you actually had an N64, hey? Yeah, I remember getting mine and crying when my mom opened the trunk and the N64 box was there. Uh, but it was just a plain black. It wasn't one of these cool see-through ones. Did you really just try to start the mushroom cup with me? Moo Farm is elite. <laughs> well, which one do you Fine, we can play Moo Farm if you really want. Oh, perfect. I don't even know what button makes the cart go forward. I was about forward. to ask you which one that is. <laughs> oh, there's no boost, I forgot. Uh, yep. Oh, I missed, I missed, this is not going well. Okay. Yeah, you you Ooh, do not want to lose to this me. This spawn time. Um, oh, and the checkpoint was so far back. I missed again. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, I just made it. I got time, I got time. Are you just trying to like bullet bill to the end? Cause I don't think that's a thing oh, in this game. Oh no. Yeah, sorry. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but you suck. Listen, I'm prepping for game link. Okay, my controller doesn't work. Uh, I'm staring to the wall. <laughs> Yeah. My controller is legit broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> Look, like can't excuse turn. making. <laughs> I can't turn to the left. Okay, we're gonna do full right to turn around then. 
You, know, you were throwing a lot of shit. I got the little brother controller. <laughs> you got, did not. That's got stick drift. You talked about how great the controller was <laughs> before we started. Okay, so I don't even want to hear it. Come on, you got this. Go left. <laughs> oh no, I lost. Okay, not as I bad just gotta, as you. I just gotta make this left turn, sorry. Just a what second. are you even doing? It doesn't, it doesn't work. D brand, they really hooped me. <laughs> I gotta go right to go left. <laughs> I honestly thought you were just no. like joking. Maybe for the new CEO at Game Throw, but not for the <laughs> chief vision officer. <laughs> My preference is block fort, but I'll play double deck as well. Let's go block fort. Wanna go block fort? Yeah, I wanna beat you on your home turf. You wanna beat me on my home turf? Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna have to beat me, so <laughs> that's gonna be tough. All right, let's see. Wow. I got you. Game Link is never gonna have me on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not everyone can be a true gamer. All right, well, thanks for having me on. Uh, <laughs> you could have at least tried to hit me once. I did. <laughs> I did try. Did you really? Yeah. Oh. That's me right now, crying as Mario. And this is me. Oh, finally unboxing the actual product from our spot. They did. They totally did. They ripped off the color scheme of our color block hoodie. Wait, did they do this on purpose? This is our short circuit color block hoodie. And they totally ripped it off. This is cool. They did super detailed x-ray scans of the PlayStation 5. So when you put these stickers on, you will be seeing exactly what you would see if you were Superman. Like not creepy Superman who uses your power to look inside your game console and not your neighbor's wall. Gotta respect the attention to detail. Even the fan filters are blue. That's cool. All right, D-Brand, you did pretty good today. These look sick. You didn't get me canceled for unboxing a brand new Inbox N64. Oh yeah, they've still got the challenge to Sony's lawyers and uh, binary in here, so that's cute. And you've still got to subscribe to Short Circuit.